Hello everybody, this is Charles and I am back with another toy review, this time for Bandai's So of Chukokin GX76 UFO Robot Grandizer Dynamic Classics. Alright, so this is the uh, Grandizer box I just received uh, this uh, today in the mail. Uh, over here we see the very nice Grandizer art over here, over here at the back we see the pose of Grandizer, the dynamic poses with weapons, flight mode, the space stand, with his uh, first, alright, so without further ado, I'm gonna bring Grandizer figure over here. So, this is the Grandizer figure. Let me just adjust the camera downwards a little bit. Okay, so here we have the uh, Grandizer figure. Um, personally, I feel that this is a very nice uh, rendition of Grandizer. He's really, really very uh, anime accurate, just the way I remembered him uh, in the anime. So we have seen um, the Soul of Chukokin version and we have also seen the Super Robot Chukokin version. I, I think that the Soul of Chukokin, uh, shows the uh, GX04 version was uh, was very nice at its time. Uh, though I think I felt that it was a little bit shorter. Uh, this one wise I think the in terms of the proportion wise this is longer. And for the uh, SRC version, I felt that the Grandizer was a little bit slightly beefier. So, you know, it's a different rendition, but this is really, really very much anime accurate. Uh, in terms of colors wise, I really like it a lot. You can see that the colors of the horn, the top part of the gold is of a shinier uh, gold, uh, whereas the uh, bottom part is of a darker shade of gold. So, this is really nice, and I think it's really, really anime accurate. So in terms of die cast content, okay, the chest part, okay, this top chest portion, the black part is die cast. Okay, you have no die cast content for the top arm, but the lower part of the arm, this elbow part, the, uh, sorry, this lower part of the arm, the blue part is die cast. And uh, look at the joints wise, the joints inside are not die cast, uh, which is a little bit of a disappointment for me, which I'll go through more in detail later. Uh, over here, I'm going to take out this part here. In the uh, lower part of the body, Okay, over here inside the hip joints, okay, you can see that the uh, joints joining, the part joining the lower waist and entire waist, this part is die cast and then we see that the hip joints are die cast as well. I'm gonna pop this back in. And uh, moving down the, uh, this portion, okay, this portion feels uh, the front part of, uh, it feels a little bit like die cast, I can't really be sure, but it seems to be like die cast because it's pretty cold to the touch. The thighs are die cast. The lower feet, okay, the lower legs, sorry, the lower legs are die cast for sure. The feet, okay, the top part, die cast, the bottom part is uh, is not die cast, it's just plastic. So over here, yeah, we can say that this piece has quite a fair bit of die cast content, which I am pretty much very happy about it about. So um, before that, let's just go through briefly on, on, on the booklet as well. So this booklet was pretty nice, uh, artwork booklet, it shows the early designs of Grandizer. Color schemes, and here we see the different colors for the horn, the top and bottom. Uh, and then we also see some scenes from the anime, which is pretty cool. And then I think the sculpting of the figure as well. And uh, this is the uh, this is the uh, pilot. I think he's called Duke. Yeah, I think he's called Duke. Yes. So um, yeah, back to the figure itself. In terms of articulation wise, okay, the head. Okay, you can actually do this. It's a double jointed part. Okay, so the neck and the head are two different joints. So be really careful in moving the head joints because even the instructions they did warn you to be careful when you're moving the the head joints because there is possibly a pain chip as well. You can move the head side to side. Um, I think you can rotate 360, but I'm just not gonna do it right here just in case I might uh, scrape off some paint. And over here, okay, at the back you can see. It's meant for you to uh, have Grandizer in his flight mode so that when you put him in the spacer, you can actually look good. So, what I will do to actually avoid paint chip, okay? On this part, I'll actually lower the neck down all the way first. And then I'll just move this head part, okay? As much as possible. Okay, following which, I will gently, carefully slot it in over here. Okay, this is the avoid paint chip. So, you can see over here, I can have Grandizer in his uh, spacer mode, okay, you can see the head is so clear in the right angle right now. So uh, what I did was just to minimize the, try my best to minimize the paint chip. So let me just get this out. Okay, fortunately I look at the uh, silver part over here. I don't see any um, visible paint chip, fortunately. So yes, the trick to make sure that you don't get paint chip is just to move the, the head to the front as much as you can. 
then while making sure that the neck joint is forward you move the back head joint all the way as back as possible as you can and once it's in you slowly slowly make sure you get the right angle okay slot the head joint in it's a very tight angle but once you get it correct uh, you can really avoid the uh, pain chip which is really painful I know so okay that's done so in terms of arms wise you can do full 360 rotation the shoulder joint is a separate joint over here you can see okay there's allowance for you to move you can move the hands uh, arm up to 90 degrees okay um, just to note that the shoulder joints over here are plastic so the pin the pin holding on to the shoulder joints is plastic so um, which and, and the shoulder joint itself is plastic as well okay this entire part is plastic as well uh, which is a little bit of a dismay to me because I felt that these joints are heavily used especially when I post the figure and, and such so I would think that they will be pretty much uh, prone to wear and tear uh, and in my opinion it would have been better to make them die cast you know so I had to prolong the life of the joint so I'm not sure how good this plastic is but I hope that it lasts uh, well because I heard of stories whereby um, older joints uh, made of plastic will tend to disintegrate over time uh, happened to my GX28 Zambugo the uh, bottom neck joints the, the joints are similar it's made of uh, plastic and uh, I just left it on display and when I started moving the joint it just totally cracked so I hope this doesn't happen to the joint over here uh, anyway I still prefer they were made it in uh, die cast instead okay so uh, elbow joint wise you can do full 360 rotation on the top elbow uh, the top arm sorry and over here you have a 90 degrees bend okay you can't it's not a double jointed elbow okay it's not okay let me just pull it out and see yeah it's not a double jointed elbow yeah okay so in terms of the movement for the top body wise um, you can actually move front and back I need this because it's really really tight and I have sweaty palms so you can move it front this much okay and you can move it back this much not a lot but good enough you can rotate the waist slightly as well not a lot okay you can rotate the waist slightly you can actually uh, move the uh, waist uh, the torso side by side but be careful because if you do not move it properly the top part and the bottom part uh, will actually come in contact and you might scratch the paint off so you can actually move to the side this much you can see this is a elevated side and then you can move this side likewise okay legs wise okay legs wise before I go to the uh, hip joint let me just go through the uh, knee joint so knee joints clicky clicky joints uh, with the this part that actually folds in giving additional articulation you can actually ro rotate uh, this part but slightly I'm not going to rotate it that much because it seems really really tight you can rotate the feet 360 uh, can't really extend the feet okay but you can just have the feet moving this much the back okay it's on the ball joint so uh, of course uh, dynamic classics you need to be able to make dynamic poses so over here you can actually remove the skirt over here uh, but before, before that let me just show you the stand the stand is really awesome once you open the stand it comes with the uh, spare, spare hands uh, you have this part which I'll showcase later and therefore this is a replacement part for the skirt so I'm just gonna take one of it out here first side so over here the way to take out the skirt there's actually a a, a uh, indent over here so all you need to do is just to pluck it outwards okay so you need to use your fingernail push it outwards okay that's the way to get it so do not attempt to pull it out this way because there is a joint okay there is a, a peg over here so if you were to just forcefully just pluck it out like that you might break this part okay you might break this part uh, I doubt you will break this part but this part could be broken so the way to pull it back is just slot it in over here first okay near the waist and clip it down okay let me get the angle correct clip it down all right so take it out don't pluck it out this way okay it's really really dangerous you might break the joint put your finger in here and take it out all right so over here you slot the joint in likewise you see you have allowance for this so i can do my dynamic pose i can do my high kick uh, i'm not going to do a much of a side kick uh, side wise you can move this much because you're blocked by the skirt so this way you can see i can hear nice clicky clicky sounds 
Yeah, you can do a nice dynamic pose over here during pose. And since I'm at it, I'm gonna do the uh, rocket punch. It's actually not called rocket punch, it's called some other punch move. I'm just gonna pull it out here. And uh, okay, so it gives some spare uh, spare parts, which is really cool. Spare uh, lower arm for you to, to replace. Uh, and then this lower part, okay, they gave you two of it, it's entirely die cast. So that's awesome. But this black part is plastic, but this part, this blue part, is entirely die cast. So you can simulate two types of uh, attacks. Uh, I don't... Okay, there's this fist. Okay, this is the totally closed uh, part. Okay, you can put it in over here. Okay, looks this way. Okay, let me have some dynamic bear looking pose. Okay, or you can actually remove this. Okay, this is not really my preferred weapon. Doesn't really look that nice. I prefer it this way. This is the, like, the cutter version. Slot it in as well. So let me just push it in. Be careful pushing it because it's plastic, so we just make sure you don't break anything. Slow slot this in, and I will rotate the arm, the first to face the right direction. Okay, I'll slot it in over here. Okay, and for the other first, I will take this out and simulate a different uh, attack. Okay, I need to take this joint out as well. Okay, take this joint out. And I shall put in this. So this is the second uh, variation. So yes. So it's pretty cool, you know. I can do two two types of attack if I want to. One is a drill one. You know, I, I don't recall seeing Grand Dizer do, do do this in anime. Having two different uh, attacks this way. He usually does both of this or both of this. But you know, it's up to the imagination of the player to do what you want to do. Right, so you know, you actually simulate, let's say for example, he fires this off, this entire thing comes off, and then inside here, it has this part, you know, similar to the uh, Mazinger Z part, we're going to just slot it in to simulate, you know, that the, uh, you know, you fire off the drill punch, woo, and then this is what's left. And then when it comes in back, take this out, slot this in. Ta da! Okay. So enough of this feature, I'm just going to put this back in here and remove the arm here, I remove this one I'll plug in the original arms Okay, nice die cast arms, seriously, really really nice die cast arms So it's in, and it sort of clicks back in place quite nicely, I like the clicking sound Yeah, clicks back in place pretty nicely uh, I'm going to move the stand aside and oh, I'm going to replace this part again, so plug it in out. This is made of plastic, by the way. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna have Grand Dizer stand nicely again. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna just, just to share a little bit, I'm quite OCD about, you know, posing my figures. I like them to be really, really straight. So for example, when looking at here, right? When I pose my figure, I'll make sure that this line and this line are aligned together. This line and this line are aligned together. Uh, I know certain people, they don't mind, you know, they might go all over the place, they might look like this, but... Uh, and then, you know, when you pose the figure in front, you can't really tell, but for me, I have this OCD. I, I, I will want to make sure that they are aligned with each other. I'm not sure if uh, any other collectors feel the same way, you have this same OCD as I do. Uh, if you do, do... Uh, do comment, do share, share your OCD with me so I know that I'm not alone. Yeah, in fact, I have OCD for this for most of my figures. I, I want, when I display that, I want them to be, you know, perfectly symmetrical. You know, I can't stand it when one side is, is unbalanced or, you know, when you have the legs posed together, sometimes you realize that, you know, one leg tends to turn out, one feet tends to turn out slightly more than the other. I want to them to think face the same no totally uh okay back back with my review uh it comes with this weapon okay the cutters i think they are called the uh these are the i can't remember what these are called so the fans are gonna hit me for this uh i seriously can't remember what these are the they're not the spacer the spacer is the Okay, I can't remember what this is. Okay, you, you as a fan, you have to enlighten me. I can't remember. I'm making this review like 2 a.m. in the morning. I can't remember, but I know they are his trademark weapons. So over here, uh, I've actually pre-assembled them. They came, they came separate. This thing can be taken out totally, and this thing at the bottom is taken out as well. Uh, so you realize that for the bottom, okay, they have two different types. So this goes with this one. Okay, you can actually plug it in. 
okay whereas this okay it has the it doesn't have the joint so you just pack it in this way and then when you want to form the two weapons together you just take out the bottom and you just join the two of them together voila really really nice okay very really nice so like i said this part was uh they came separate yeah i'm gonna put this back in um put this out i'm gonna put this aside first yeah and uh, for this part okay you can you can actually remove them so uh you know if you really want to simulate him having a weapons you actually remove them before he holds his weapon for me i don't really care even when i display my grand dizer with his weapon i'll just leave this two here because i think he looks much nicer with this you know if i take it out i felt it, he looks really bare okay i think he looks really bare without this two so i will just leave it on him even though i display him with the weapon similarly you know when i display my uh, voters v Photos 5, okay, Photos 5, you know, you know, when they took out the chest part to form the sword, uh, I will still have this chest part in and I just have the sword by itself. So yeah, cool. So right now, I'm going to do some uh, size comparison. Let me just align him a little bit more first. I'm, yeah, I'm OCD, even when I'm comparing the height of the figures. Okay, I'll make sure they are standing perfectly correctly. Okay, more or less okay. So this is Grandizer. I'm gonna do some size comparison with his folks. Here we have Mazinger Z. Here we have Great Mazinger. So in terms of size-wise, we can tell that the scale is absolutely right. So Grandizer is taller than Mazinger and Great Mazinger, which is absolutely right. So if I were to put them together, it's like, you know, the height really makes sense. So tall, taller, tallest. You know what? In fact, he is not the tallest. If you were to add in one more character, which is so Chokoki Mazin Kaiser, he is the biggest or the tallest among them. So if we were to put Grandizer in front of Mazin Kaiser, yeah, in terms of you know, physical, physique wise, yeah, more or less the same. Uh, just you know, Mazin Kaiser is definitely uh larger and slightly beefier. But you know, it's cool. I have this, I'm gonna have this four display together in my shelf. You know, it's gonna look so awesome. And I, I can't wait for the um, spacer to come. And I'm quite surprised that I thought for the spacer, the, in order for Grandizer to fit in. Okay, let me just get the rest of them out first. You know what, I'm gonna leave them here. You know, I, I think they look really good together. I'm just gonna leave them here uh, as one whole big family. So when I first saw the concept art for the uh, spacer for Grandizer, I thought they might have to remove the legs or remove the uh, the uh, upper body just to slot in the spacer. But I was quite amazed that based on the most recent pictures I saw, you can basically slot the entire Grandizer into the spacer. So this spacer is going to be really huge, you know. Looking at the size, it's going to be at least this huge. And you know, it's awesome, you know, it's totally anime accurate. Whereas, you know, you see in GX04, you have to actually... Uh, shorten the legs, you have to actually shorten the legs and push them in order for Grandizer to fit in the spacer whereas for this new dynamic classic spacer you're gonna see Grandizer literally can follow the pose of him really sweeping, you know, just going into the spacer right here and then the whole body goes in and then the hands go to the back that is gonna work, so that is gonna be perfectly anime and show accurate which is what I'm really really excited for and I really look forward to receive the spacer soon. I think the spacer is going to be released in July or August. Ah, doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, what, what matters for you to know is that when the spacer is in my hands, I will definitely do a review for it. So uh, I highly recommend this Grandizer. I think, seriously, among the three dynamic classic Mazinger, Great Mazinger, and Grandizer, Grandizer really knocks it you know, off the field. And it's really, really awesome. Uh, it's really the best among the three uh, on, on all levels and I simply love it. So I'm, I only have one of it, one of this and one of this and I'm so tempted. I'm just going to get one more of this. I'm going to get one more Grandizer. It's really cool, really awesome. And you know, this is really the best Grandizer rondation they've done. Uh, better than, than any of the other Grandizer rondations I've seen. So... Uh, good job, kudos to Bandai, uh, did a good job, uh, apart from the part that you know, I felt that you should have made the shoulder joints die cast. Okay, that's your mistake, you should have made the sh shoulder joints die cast. Apart from, that, apart from that, no other complaints for me. So here's Charles signing off with yet another toy review, I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Do stay tuned to my channel for more reviews next time.